Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Jessica Alexandria, and for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. So we have a ton to talk about. It is Thanksgiving week for majority of us, from at least what I know about my analytics. Most of us will be celebrating Thanksgiving in some form this week, so there's that. But when it comes to astrological events, there's a lot going on in the skies. This is one of those weeks where it can really bring out some really awesome energies and make you feel very good, but there's definitely some challenging moments that we are gonna talk about in the most brutally fashion way that you have known to expect from me thus far. So go ahead and grab a snack or grab some tea, some coffee, get some water, get hydrated, get cozy, and let's go ahead and dive right in. So first things first, one of the transits that's standing out to me the most and is most likely impacting your energy levels is the fact that Mars and the Sun are meeting in this beautiful conjunction in the sign of Scorpio and trining Neptune retrograde in the sign of Pisces right now as we speak. Now, the time of me recording this is Monday. This energy, however, is going to be felt all, well, the final days of last week now currently at the start of this week from the time that as I'm recording and leading into mid to yeah middle of towards the end of this week so we're going to be feeling the inner the umbrella of these vibes almost all of this week how this will impact you energetically you will see this because nine times out of ten you're probably going to feel a little lethargic need to take some naps you might feel like you're slowing down you might feel drained there's this opportunity here believe it or not to actually feel a bit more drained usually when this happens it's because you are receiving energetic downloads intuitive downloads this is because the, those psychic realms scorpio and neptune have aligned in order for you to be receptive to be open so if you find wow look at this at the bottom of the car the bottom of the deck is literally the high priestess so, and then 222 on the clock. So if you, if you are receptive to this energy, if you're flowing with this energy, you can find yourself feeling energetically called to take more naps, to disconnect from information, sources, conversations, people, relationships that may not feel like a vibrational match for you. You simply may not just have, um, you may not have the capacity to deal with certain conversations and vibes like you normally would. You might need a little bit more solitude, quiet time. What I highly recommend during a transit like this is to find yourself migrating towards bodies of water, whether that be going to the ocean, the sea, a lake, a river, or something as simple as creating your own body of water in your space, in your home environment. So that could be running a bath for yourself or back in the day, I used to fill up like, this is so wild, but it worked. I used to fill up a Tupperware bin with um, like filtered water and I would put Epsom salts in it when I didn't have a bathtub and I would just sit in that big bin. I literally had a bin, a storage bin just for that because I would take my spiritual baths in it. And this was back in the days when I was living in Philadelphia, had a studio efficiency apartment and no tub. That wasn't gonna stop me from living my best life, honey, no. So that's one way. Another thing that I am definitely seeing at the start of this week is to start off with ritual, especially when it comes to psychic vision, when it comes to higher wisdom, when it comes to connection, altars. Make sure that you're not pushing yourself to do this though. Remember, this is definitely feminine energy. This is more about rest, restorative, receptive, feeling emotions, those type of vibes are what is supported at the start of this week. Actually, now that I'm saying this, I was actually just talking about this with my girl group. We were talking about our menstrual cycles and apps that we like to use and also syncing our cycles to the energies of the moon. And I told them I was gonna make a video about moon cycles and magic. And this is something that I've been doing for years. You guys have heard me talk about this since the start of my YouTube channel and I never got that video up. So let me know if you guys would be interested in hearing about the magic of feminine body and how the changes of our bodies can be used for a uh, ritual for ourselves to honor, to soothe, to nurture, to support, and also the changes that are going on in your body on a biological level, because it's really, really fascinating. It's really fascinating stuff. And when you start to understand the ebbs and the flows of your body, you start 
to love them more instead of being like, oh, why am I so exhausted? Well, honey, honey, it's because your body is doing incredible things right now. And if you understood it, then you would know a little further. We don't take that into consideration. Anyway, moving forward, rituals this week are fantastic, phenomenal times, but make sure that you're not forcing yourself with whatever that looks like, whatever you expect it to look like. Any type of box that you're trying to put yourself in when it's like, oh, this is what I should be doing during this time. Let's just throw that box out and set it on fire in the backyard. I'm okay with that. If you don't have a backyard, you can use mine. Let's go ahead and just set that expectation on fire and say goodbye to it for once, for once and for all, right? These energies are definitely giving goddess vibes. The, the beauty the blessing, but also the curse, which I don't really even want to use that word, but for lack of a better word, of being goddess energy and feminine energy is the complexity of emotion. Those are things too that we are going to see at the start and the midpoint of this week. So keep your eyes open for that. But if you allow yourself simply to feel, you should be just fine. Now, where you might not be just fine is this next transit that is going to be impacting us from the early start early midpoint start so maybe let me just break it down for you guys and dates i don't know why i'm being so complex right now my virgo brain is overthinking to infinity and beyond i would like to say tuesday wednesday thursday friday we're gonna be feeling these energies it's the sun squaring off with saturn my loves and also yeah ugh, gosh and also mars squaring off with saturn um towards the very end, the 25th, but the 24th, 23rd, we're gonna feel it. We're still gonna be feeling it and then leading into the next week. So the majority of this week, and I kind of mentioned this in a post and kind of um, wasn't trying to instigate anxiety or panic for anyone, but that happened. And for those of you guys that were triggered by that, I'm sorry. These transits though, being totally honest with you, and I'm giving you a trigger warning right now, if you don't want to talk about the more difficult aspects and how they impact human life and our day-to-day -day, um, experiences, then I would probably skim, sk skim through. And if someone would like to leave a timestamp down below, I really appreciate the teamwork effect. While you're at it, can you give this video a thumbs up? Um, yeah, so... If you're cool with talking about all the many different things that astrology covers and being honest about it, which I'm all about, then let's go ahead and continue carrying forward. So these transits, anytime when we have an impact or an influence of Sun and Saturn, Mars and Saturn, we are entering into difficult realms, tension, aggression, anger, frustration, built up resentment. Um, it's not easy. It's not avoidable. It's something that will be there regardless. Where this will show up for you depends on your chart, depends on your rising sign essentially because your rising sign situates your the entirety of your chart so that me as an astrologer I could see where these planets are currently transiting the house that they're currently transiting so I can pinpoint exactly where this energy will unfold these are the types of transits it doesn't always happen okay but these are the type of transits that can create accidents um, events that can pop off in a great in a great way can be destructive definitely we are also living in times where we have Uranus retrograde in the sign of Taurus our sense of stability and security is at is under attack right now this is not just in the United States this is globally and we're seeing that I've been talking about it for for many <laughs> many um like a few years now a couple years now and we're in the, the midst of it right now as we speak so it's not to provoke anxiety or to give you internal tension it's to give an explanation of why this is happening and what you can expect it's not going to be an easy transit it never is these these energies are going to be global of course but if you're concerned about your intimate life Usually how this impacts is breakdowns in relationships, breakdowns in um, certain dynamics. Yeah, look at that temperance card. 
this is exactly the energy that it is that we've been working with. It's kind of like, I don't want to say making the best out of a, of a situation, but figuring out how to make, make it work. This temperance card, believe it or not, and I teach this in Sacred Circle Tarot School, which links for that are down below. Temperance card is about learning how to merge, meet, mingle with even your shadow side, the parts of ourselves that scare us, that cripple us, that disempower us. We meet them, we learn them, we, we attempt to understand them so that they don't control us. And they are controlling you if they're things that you can't talk about. They control you if they're things that you find ways to maneuver yourself around them because you don't want to touch it. It's controlling you because it's controlling how you approach it. When you find a way to face it and, and deal with it, you can find a solution, you know? Um, I do want to say that, of course, if you're calling in for protection, you will be protected regardless. This is why I really strongly believe in and have always been a huge advocate advocate for encouraging people to develop their own relationships with the divine outside of YouTube, TikTok, etc., etc. It doesn't matter how gifted the person is that you're getting the reading from or the intuitive download or how hard it resonates. At the end of the day, it can only resonate as long as you allow it to resonate because you've done some of the work within. So if you have any feelings of concern or tension, those are things that you can combat and deal with simple through simple prayers, through simple intention, through protection work. All of those things can be re instant, instantly immediately resolved. Most people are not in areas that are um, aggressively life-threatening. Um, but at the same time, I, me personally, now this is when I, now I'm going to input my personal opinion here. I don't think that because if you're in a safe place that you turn a blind eye away from places that are going through things because um, not only hum humanly, like from a human perspective, um, we never want to see anybody suffering. We never want to see anybody hurting, but deeper than that, well, maybe not deeper, but higher, like on a superficial level from that, this could be any one of us. And this is a global influence. That's another thing too that I want to talk to you guys about is the future for the globe and mankind. Um, I've, I've heard some comments in the past of people being like, Jess, you're not being positive. You're being negative. First of all, I'm not a positive person or a negative person. I'm, I'm a realist and I don't go in any one of those directions. Um, having said that, my faith is in astrology and astrology doesn't make promise rainbows and butterflies. There's going to be difficult times throughout human history. Obviously we've seen that and we are in one of those, we're in the thick and getting thicker of another tough time in human history. Why wouldn't we talk about this honestly? Why wouldn't we, you know? So if that's something that um, is not, if that's something that you can't do, then this, I don't know if this is, you know, the YouTube channel for you, you know? And I think I'm gonna stop apologizing for just bringing, the tr bringing my truth and bringing the truth. Uh, so having said that, um, these are events that even though you may not be personally impacted by these energies, you even like it immediately, it's something that I think energetically every single one of us can contribute to again, through prayer, through protection, through advocacy, every, everyone's going to be different. Mostly it's, it depends on your Mars. <laughs> it depends on your Mars and also a few other placements going on in your chart, how you probably handle conflict right now that doesn't immediately impact you. That's a whole other conversation. But for the most part, I think minimum prayer is very, is very big. Lighting a candle, writing a petition for peace on earth. I would do that. You know, now in your more personal lives, because some of you guys, there's, you know, the world feels like all these things are going on and you're just like, oh my God, you know, people are this, this is happening. This is happening. And I'm worried about my dating life and I'm worried about, you know, this, I just want to tell you that you are so valid in that too, honey. Like the whole world could be burning, knock on wood, and you could still have on your mind love and a crush. And that is okay. That is okay. If I was your mom, and we were sitting at the table, or if I was your best friend and we were sitting at the table, I would tell you that you are so valid in your feelings and your opinions and the fear and the anxiety that you have about your crush is so real. And that doesn't take away from the power of those feelings. So I, I'm that person too, just so that you guys know, it's not all 
let's we can only talk about the aggressive things let's talk about everything and i just want to say that um when it comes to like the the more intimate details of our lives this could be a tricky week as well but i want to give you a little tool that you can use i think that looking at the chart from what i can tell our perception and our communication is going to be make or break either very healing or um, kind of create like a setback here. Words, when I say words, I want to tell you that the words can be healing or they can be destructive. This is one of those weeks, even though we don't have Mercury retrograde here, this is one of those weeks where sometimes what people say um, and what they mean may be different and that's worth exploring. So if you feel, because we also have, we, Mercury is trying Chiron, Chiron retrograde in the sign of Aries. Um, even though it's a trine, that's a beautiful, easy, effortless uh, aspect. But sometimes with a, tri a trine, it's things just kind of flow out. And that can also include our words. They just flow right out of our mouth and sometimes open mouth, insert foot. You know, one of those moments where you're like, I can't believe I said that. To my boss, I told him, I told her that her husband is hot. Like, what? You know what I mean? Like, why would I, why would I say that? Why would I do that? You just were feeling it, you know, in the moment. It happens to every single one of us. That's just an example, not specific. I haven't done that yet. I also don't have a boss. I am my own boss, but um, I could see myself doing that. I think I say things all the time that I'm just like, what the hell was that? You know, especially in my personal life. Anyway, um, yeah, so this trine, even though it's beautiful and has the opportunity to heal, it can be a moment where you're just like, holy crap, why would I say that? Why would they say that? I would use my words and use my actions from my words as an opportunity to bond, to build. I would not be, um, I would not shy away if something does come out that you say, that you do, that you regret. Um, I would use it as an opportunity to learn how to apologize, to learn how to ask for clarity in different ways, to ask for confirmation, affirmation, whatever it is that you need. This is a wonderful time to heal um, using the power of our words. Also perspective. Remember that our perspective can really make or break a situation as well. If we are perceiving something or if we are taking our own per our own perceptions and putting them on another person, we are not operating from a truth space. We're operating from perspectives only. So go ahead and ask for, ask questions, be curious. This is a thing that I've been saying, a statement that I've been saying for quite a long time is curiosity gets rewarded these days. If you are someone who is asking more questions instead of telling people how they should think and feel and what they should do, you're going to fare better. You're going to see more opportunity versus limitations. Are you someone who is using your words to try to get a point across, but you're offending everyone in that process. You know, this is a, a chance for you to learn to do different so that you can actually um, see improvements in the pursuit of your goal, whatever your goal is. Um, when it comes to crushes, communication, love, and things like that, this is one of those weeks where Venus, you, you do have the blessing of Venus transiting through the sign of Libra. She is directly opposing Chiron retrograde in Aries. So this is this really interesting dynamic, and we did see this pan out in the news, where um, people and energies in position of, of power, how they use and abuse, manipulate, profit off of, benefit off of feminine energy, we need to find a beautiful balance. Well, <laughs> I shouldn't have jumped from saying that into the into that because that doesn't even do that justice. I'm not even talking about what's going on in the news right now. I'm just saying in ways that most of us can relate to, finding a beautiful balance between uh, masculine and feminine energies, not only within ourselves, but also how we approach relationships and partnerships and how we show up for others, how we receive from others, how we reciprocate, all of those things. Um, has a beautiful opportunity to heal as well. And a lot of this comes from our perspective and it also comes from conversations, communication. Checking in with your partner, asking them how they feel and finding new ways or fresh ways. That's another way of saying new. So maybe finding um, more brilliant ways or ways that work for you now, innovative ways to connect with the people around you that matter the most. I want to say, that the depth of the com the relationships that I'm seeing this week 
is here. But the conversations of this week might not necessarily relate the depth of those connections. So don't mistake lighthearted, silliness conversations, fun, laughter, as someone being superficial or not highlighting the, the, the amount of depth that someone feels for you and loves you. Um, if that's something that matters to someone here, I just really feel called, wow, guys, look, the lovers right on time. Um, I really feel like saying that, um, I just feel like a lot of, a lot of the, the way that the charts are situated right now, humor is a lot of our best friends. Humor is getting a lot of people through these days and that is okay. It is okay to not talk about the heavy stuff, not try to address it. Either way, I want to say that it's it's that those type of energies will find a way through anyway. When we have Sun and Mars squaring off with Saturn, there is a chance, like I said, and I guess this is a more difficult conversation again, trigger warning, but there is a chance um, for those really tough conversations, triggering conversations, and even events as they unfold present day that can trigger very difficult emotions. So if you can, if you're so, if you're one of the many people who are gonna be able to enjoy this holiday or be able to have the opportunity to make the most of this holiday and this week, I would do that and not try to hash out any type of difficult conversations and dilemmas. If you do feel like you want to have a, a conflict with someone or if there is conflict, I would ask if this is the week to do that. The reason is if this needs to be had, if this com conflict needs to be had, Saturn square sun and Saturn square moon, I'm sorry, Saturn square Mars is going to bring up the conversation regardless because its back is against the wall. These are energies that I wouldn't go looking for it, but if it showed up in front of my face, I would be like, all right, you want to have this conversation right now? Let's go ahead and have a moment. Let's go pull over to the side and let's talk it out. What do you need to say? I'm here to listen and I want to hear your perspective. And I would pick and choose my words wisely. I would slow down everything that is that I'm saying so that I am hearing myself and that I'm choosing my words to really reflect my thoughts, my feelings, my wishes, my hopes, all of those things. But this is not the week to go looking for um, having an intense conversation unless it's so unavoidable or so like bothering you so much. That's the other thing too that I want to say. Um, last One of the last things I'll say before I go is astrological, like sometimes in the ast astrology community, there will be a difficult transit and the astrology community will be like, oh my God, this is something that's happening. Avoid this at all costs. And you end up almost delaying the inevitable and making a situation worse because you don't allow it to simply just be. I want to tell you guys that my approach and my belief in astrology is that there are energies that are around us that we feel. And if you understand astrology, you'll understand where it is that it's coming from so that when it pops off, you know how to address it if you want to address it or you know how to turn it into an opportunity if you want to turn it into an opportunity. What I'm saying is, is that you do have free will. So you're not doomed to show up as this robotic sun square Saturn, sun square, no, Saturn square Mars. I'm going to create conflict with you or crash my car into the side of your house. You know what I mean? Because um, it is, <laughs> this is one of those transits too that's just like, okay, we're going to watch the news. As I said, you know, like I said, like this, you you, you wait and you watch and see what, how it's going to Who's going to feel this and how are they going to feel it? It's going to be very interesting to watch it. And I'm smiling now because um, I haven't heard anything terrible today. So, and I have a good day today. So I'm smiling right now. But when it does pop off, do know that I'm not smiling and laughing because I'm, I flashed forward into the future and I'm like laughing about what happened. No, because um, some people will be like, well, why are you laughing about it? If it's so, can we just disarm her? <laughs> have you noticed that? The internet is like lit like the internet is looking for a fight like have you guys noticed that let me know down in the comments everybody there is not you can't say but I understand but whoo girl like and it's it's crazy to me too sorry I'm going off on a, a tangent right now but it's so crazy to me too because I'll literally be talking about the tension that's going on in the skies and people will be actively fighting 
about it. And I'm like, you guys are literally proving the point. Like it was never like this, but these transits, bro, these transits, we're all feeling them. Even when you, well, all right. <clears throat> anyway, moving forward. Yeah. I think if you're someone who can use this energy for, um, like a sense of humor or to play and to interact and to be curious, that's how I would use this. And any type of conflict, yep, the world. We might see some global events as well. Well, I predicted that there's going to be some some energies. More towards the, the full moon, though. That's next week, the 27th. Um, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Full moon in Gemini this year doesn't seem to be playing around. Um, but I'll have a whole video about that. So uh, last thing I'll say before I go, I'm going to shuffle some some more cards. Sacred Circle Tarot School is open, by the way. Um, so too will be the shop right after the holidays. We are working to get orders out. Let me go ahead and I want to say to you, oh, hey, Knight of Wands. It's interesting because Thanksgiving holidays and holidays in general towards the end of the year tend to be very triggery for a lot of people. That goes without saying. With that, though, I want to remind you that Venus is directly opposing Chiron, and Chiron is that wounded aspect, that wounded healer. And retrograde, it is bringing up for many, most of us, um, our wounds that we are learning how to navigate, especially when it comes to our masculine energy, how we protect ourselves, how we are defensive, how... There could be um, points where you feel disempowered. You may give your power over to other people. You may not want to speak up for yourself. You may be too aggressive in how you speak up. You may not confront things and, you know, put your head in the sand. You know, there, there's so many different energies how this can impact. And again, it would be dependent on your personal astrology chart. I just want to say that, I would keep an eye out for the triggerization moments because especially when it comes to love, attraction, beauty, value, money, resources, being alone, being in a relationship, the future when it comes to love, you know, all of these things are being, I don't say under attacked, but they're highlighted. They're under a magnifying glass. So if this is something that's going to open up a vulnerability, like if we can see that this is a vulnerable place then at least we know, maybe not to take things personally because it's hard when it's in the moment, but at least we know where it's coming from and it allows you to give more grace to the moment so that you can make the most from the moment and not succumb to the moment when it shows up. And I just want to say that this is, um, this is going to be all all of this week. My voice is just having a hard time lately. I just am really struggling. Um, starting the 22nd is when this date is, when this energy is going to be the most exact, but we're going to be feeling it. I want to say all of this week. And I just want to give you a lot of grace within that. If I could right now, I'd wrap you guys in a big old star dusted covered blanket. And I would just give you a hot chocolate or some tea and I would put on your favorite movie and I would tell you, here's your journal, <laughs> write down all of your thoughts. I'm going to come back and check on you. You are going to be okay. You know, sometimes we need that. And that it's true. We are going to be okay. And then I look down and then there's like <laughs> the tower card, but maybe that's what it is that you're not going to, what you're not expecting is that somehow in all of this, you're going to be okay. Let me just shuffle a little bit on the tower card and see what's going on before I let you guys go. I'm not just going to like, wrap you in the blanket and be like, everything's going to be okay. Tower card. <laughs> Good luck. Queen of Swords. Love her. Wow. Knight of Wands is showing up twice. For those of you guys who are like, how do you have two cards in one deck? If you're from the Sacred Circle Tarot School, you already know that I have um, both, I have like three, uh, two, two tarot cards sandwiched into one. Um, <clears throat> I'll explain why there. Um, anyway, with the Knight of Wands, though, Knight of Wands, Queen of Swords, the Tower card, this, oh, but look at that, 
four of wands at the very base of the reading. This has a lot to do with, for, for me, um, what I'm getting is I'm hearing the word learning, um, education through observation. Those are the words that are coming through as I'm looking at these cards. I feel like you're going to learn a lot. Someone here or many of us within our group here, Bahati Love, well, Bahati, Bahati Life, we are going to learn a lot by observing people. Um, some of you guys might be a little bit more, not quiet, but you may not be as engaged, believe it or not, even with Knight of Wands here, you may not be as engaged in, and hands-on this year, this week, in the way that you normally are. There's something about the energy that feels like very um, perceptive, like you're watching, like watching everything around you. Um, not in a, like a cryptic weird way, <laughs> um, but in a way that I, I just feel like this energy of like being like um, very astute is the word that's coming through. And I'm also getting like, not a weasel, but some like a, um, an animal that like watches everything and observes everything and picks up all of the changes in the environment, not to run or hide, which may, you may want to, but you're just aware, you're keen, like you're keen to changes and you could see and sense fr uh, tension and friction before it comes um, or as it's coming down the pipeline. It's funny because I think I talked about this um, on the YouTube channel a little bit because I was, I was just saying like I felt like someone's going to be like watching that in a weird way, but keeping an eye on energy as soon as, as soon as you see something. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Yo, I, I want to tell you, oh my gosh. Okay. Well, let me just start this three of wands. Literally is what I'm saying. Seven of swords. This is keeping an eye, knowing that something is coming, coming in. And that's not, even if they're trying, even if it's trying to like sneak in, even if it's trying, even if it's subtle, you, you will see it. Any type of subtle changes and nuances and shade, you're going to pick up on it. You're going to hear it. Um, and I feel like you're not necessarily going to react. But that's so weird, though, because I actually, as I was talking just now, I kind of had a vision of like, like a fist fight in the backyard. Hmm. I hope that's not your family. Anyway, um, it's crazy that the Seven of Swords showed up because I don't know if I, I had to start this video over like three times when I was trying to get start situated because my camera and me, that's why my voice is kind of like uh, burnt out right now. Also, all I do is talk. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm sending you guys all of my love. I hope that you are well receiving of this message. I hope that you um, are empowered so that you're able to apply it. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate. You can let me know down in the comments and I will answer as many as I can, as often as I can. Let me know what your rising sign is down below. Whew. Very, very curious and interested in hearing that because um, it helps me with my own research when it comes to astrology and predictions and information sharing. I know that for many of you guys, when we greet, when we meet and greet every week, you're nodding your head. You'll be like, oh my God, Jess, this is so accurate. This is what's going on. Um, but it's also really nice to hear it when you say it. <laughs> so can you do me a favor? Also give this video a thumbs up. For those of you guys that have um, orders, we are working through them and we are getting through them, you know, just as quickly as we can. The shop will be reopening. The dates for that will be announced the, probably the day after Thanksgiving. In the meantime, though, we're getting a lot, we're getting a lot done. We're, we're turning out, um, you know, pat, wrap, wrap, wrapping and packing. Right now, though, this week, it's going to be mostly me um, <clears throat> because there's so much going on because of the holiday. So I do ask for patience um, per use. For readings, I'm working through readings as well. So thank you guys again so much for being patient. As you guys know, the last year has been like last 365 days is a big, the big word is like patience. Like, and I just really appreciate it. So thank you guys. Um, until then, I'm sending you guys all of my love. 
love, lub. I'm sending you guys all of my lub. Um, and for those of you guys that are not subscribed and moving on, I do hope that this video was helpful to you. And I hope that our paths meet again in the future. If not, that is fine. And I wish you, well, I speak a blessing over your life. If you are interested in subscribing to this YouTube channel, I do love and encourage that. And I ask for you to subscribe because I would love to have you here as well as the rest of our community here. We'd love to have you. And for everyone else that's been with me newly and those who have been with me since the beginning of time, which I didn't realize how long it has been. I know I sound like a broken record every single time, but I'm just so grateful for you. And you, I hope you know how much you mean to me because you do mean the world to me. So uh, until then, you guys, happy Thanksgiving. My love to you, your family, your pets, your friends, your home environment, everywhere that is that you are. I'm sending my love to you with that. All right, guys, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.